Oh. Are you down in uh, Wellington? No, I'm in the Auckland office, the Auckland uh, New Zealand rugby office. Okay. Can you guys yeah. hear that? How about you guys? Lark, can you hear that? Uh, oh, you had to go on the new phones. Okay. How long we got, uh, Lars? Oh, no? 48 seconds. Okay. Where are you? I can't see you. So we're going to we'll be on very, very shortly, eh, brother? All right. Uh, Ronnie, it's good to see you, my man. <laughs> good to see you too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be putting my glasses in and out throughout the show, okay? Go up, well, bro. I've got my reading glasses in my bed over there, too. What's up? What's um, I'm sure. I'm sure Ice is hiding his ones, bro. I'm sure he's. I know. You know <laughs> Ice Man Jones, eh? Uh, Could be. <laughs> oh, you can still see me. Yeah. So we're gonna be. We're gonna be. Am I coming through nice and clear as well, bro? Yes. Very, very good. Oh, good. Okay. So let's just have fun, eh? Yeah. Sounds good to me. And you can speak Psalm 1 if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're we'll starting very shortly, Lars. Okay, you ready? Stand by. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Inga the Wingers Sporting Hour here with me on iSpy Radio Samoa 87.5 FM. And if you're joining me wherever you are around the globe, it's fantastic. It's a bit, out, bit cloudy and overcast here in Apia Harbour, but nevertheless, it's 26 degrees out there and it's beautifully warm. My special guest is a very dear friend of mine, a, a ex All Black himself. And we've been together for a very, very long time. In fact, he's the father of the current All Black, Caleb uh, Clark. And I have the privilege to be able to host the Fionga Savetamba Pironi Clark. So uh, a wonderful brother who's been uh, a very dear friend and close friend of mine all these years. We've been foes on the rugby field, <laughs> friends off the rugby field. <laughs> so welcome on uh, Inga the Wingers Sport. Lo fionga sabe tamba, Ivani Clark. Malo po i lo fionga tu inga malo, malo lava soi ku mauva langi mama. So wonderful to be with you again, brother. Thankfully, I think we played together more than we had to play against each other. But wonderful to be with you in this way this morning, malo. Yes, we do have a wonderful friendship. We go way back as young as under fifteens. We're fifty-one according to the birthday calendars. So we've been together for a long, long time. And um, for those who are joining us around the globe and you're tuning into Inga the Winger Sporting Hour, this is my uh, guest that I'm very honoured to very rarely get the opportunity because he's a very, very busy man. We'll talk about that later on. But you know, it's, it's a wonderful privilege to have. Uh, we'll just call him Ronnie because I'm sure he'll, he'll love that. Hey, is that okay, Ronnie? My Lord, that sounds great to me, my Lord. <laughs> just before we start, uh, just some sporting news that's coming in regarding the weekend, the local rugby. The local rugby is, is the competition, the second school's sevens competition, the champions of champions on behalf of the Samoan Rugby Union that's going to be held here in Apia at Apia Park. And that's the, the national championships between the, the best uh, high schools from Savai, the other island, and also our Upolo main island here. So we're looking forward to that. It's a two-day tournament. And, you know, even though there's a bit of lockdown, but there's heaps of heaps of sports going on, as well as the female uh, competition that's happening as well. So, you know, if you're local and you're listening and you're tuning into England the Wing of Sport, get down to Apia Park. The competition starts off tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that, to see some more young superstars in the making. So... Um, also, we'll have the boxing, the boxing, the local boxing, which is becoming huge every weekend. There's massive crowds that's flocking to these boxing competitions. So we've got the plantation boxing ring uh, competition as well as Tumu and Pule. Uh, so you get a chance to get down to Alamangoko uh, down there and show your support. And again, boxing starts 
sports is a natural sport for some more. It starts at the age of five, it goes all the way up to the, up to 40. So if you want a bit of excitement for the uh, weekend, go out there and support these sports. And there's, there's also netball, Sam. We'll, we'll give you the draw uh, later on. But look, we were ab- absolutely, well, I'm ex- absolutely excited that I can have my good friend, Ronnie Clark. Um, and like I said early on, Ronnie is the father of the newly um, selected uh, All Black Caleb, Caleb uh, Clark. So, Ronnie, my good friend, born here in Samoa at uh, Matautua. Born at Neo, I went to a hospital, uh, but uh, mom is from Vayala and dad is from Salopata. Yes. And uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, and, and uh, you know, um, you, you know, uh, our um, condolences, you know, just recently the passing of your, your wonderful father, your Feta, and, um, you know, that's, you know, really sad news, and we all know what it's like to, to lose a loved one so close, and I remember Caleb uh, paying wonderful tributes to, to his grandfather there in one of the games that we watched live here from Samoa, so... Um, everyone, you know, you've had a wonderful career in All Black during my time. We both grew, grew up together. We started way back in the, the uh, age groups. We, we battled out both on and off the field. I remember my very first, one of my very first uh, tours that we went on, you know, we were bulleted together in a place called Te Araha. And uh, we were only, what, 13, 14 years of age. And we didn't even know what. We were, very young. <laughs> we were out on the farm, weren't we? I think just just first of all, um, you know, I need to refer back. But that's the funny thing about Sky TV when people are finding out information, but yeah. they don't know the the real information. Yeah. Like that night when it was announced that um, um, that Caleb's grandfather had passed away, everyone presumed that it was my father oh. that had passed away. So I got these millions of texts um, oh. from my family all going, "Oh no, what's happened?" and and I thought, hey, it's my wife's mm. father that passed away. So um, I think that's why. And of course, as you saw, Caleb was very emotional during the, through the game and, uh, and other things as well. But yes, it was Siala's father. Oh. Um, Dad, as you know, Inga, he's still doing his walks around the Henderson and doing his other things to keep himself well and looking after mum as well. So mm-hmm. then, that was also played for Man Samoa, a big man himself, mm-hmm. big instructor. Yes, and an ex fireman. So yes, yes everyone his father, in fact, would always walk past my house at five thirty <laughs> in the morning. fire station. And you know, you're right, Inga. That's where it started for us. I mean, rugby was always in our blood. Um, you know, uh, the wonderful thing that Dad represented Samoa um, in 1970. Sorry, no, earlier than that, to the South Pacific Games during the 60s, where they won the uh, the gold medal for Samoa. And uh, we played with others like um, Jordan Meredith and um, Alan Gray was part of that, uh, of the management of that team, I think, at that time. So, um, but I think, so rugby was always in the blood. Um, Dad then, he got a scholarship to New Zealand um, um, as a student um, before then, though, and I think, the thing about it, and the reason why I mentioned it, was he came to New Zealand on a scholarship to Wamanui Boys College, and it was there he played rugby. But I think the, the thing about it as well was that he befriended another scholarship student from PG, and um, he they became such good friends that they made a pact that their their first when they go back home and they meet their wives and start a, a family that they, they would name each other's firstborn sons by their names. So Dad honoured that of his Fijian friend, whose name was Eroni Vanatiku, and named me Eroni. So I think many people have asked, where's your name? Your name is not Samuel. What is your, where's your name from? It's, yes, you're right, it's Fijian. And all the Fijians have known that for a long time as well. So many a time when you and I have kind of started you know, playing rugby days as young men, yes, it was those, those days. And I, it was always in the blood. It was always... Part of our, for you and me, we grew up watching. Grew up Brian Williams and yes. and others, and those were our inspirations and uh, for for playing rugby. Well, you know, uh, certainly your father and uh, people like the great Brian Williams, uh, they're the ones that um, you know paved the path for us. And we we I've always said, I'm, all I'm doing is reaping the benefits of the hard earned efforts that people have gone before us, eh? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, your dad is right up there in terms of the influence that they've had on 
specific island sports men and women from doing really, really well. And, um, you know, for those who are just tuning in, you know, my guest is Ironic Clark, a ex All Black. Hey, played for the, the Blues. I think there's over about 50, 50 games for the Blues. But he's also played for the Auckland uh, provincial team that we've been both part of. And uh, over 150 games for the province over the years. And one of the very few, I think you're one of five or six that's ever able to play that number of games for, for the province. So it's been a wonderful feat. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me, you know, as a so you, this new role, for those who, who don't know, um, everyone has been given the opportunity to represent, it's called the Pacifica Engagement Manager for the New Zealand Rugby Union. Tell me about that role, Ronnie. Well, it was really, I think, um, we are such huge stakeholders within the game of rugby within New Zealand and globally. For a long time, since the days of um, Tua Fasina, Sir Brian Williams, we saw more and more of our past speaker coming through. And you, know, you came through, of course, around near the time with when, when Michael had come before us, and then you came through, and then, then more of us that has come follow through after that. And given that we are such huge contributors to this game in Aotearoa, we are not big contributors on off the field. Yeah. We are not big contributors in administration and in governance, even within the organization of New Zealand rugby. And it's there in the places where they are making decisions that impact on us wider. And I think there was a, we started to really begin to make a push forward to ensure that we did have the representation we last year or a few years ago, we saw Tofa Sina, who was the, became the president of right. uh, New Zealand rugby. And soon after that, we saw um, the Sunga Ya Lauli, so Michael had then ascended to the board. Yes. And so now we were starting to make progress to where we're at the table making decisions and following through from that soon after was that we needed somebody at operations level within New Zealand rugby that was making those uh, decisions happen. And so that's how this role came through. And I think there, from that time, um, I've, I've always believed that we needed to have that representation at those levels. It was the same with Sir Brian. It was the same with Sir Michael. And as you know, Inga, for a long time over the years, we've contributed on the field and we've represented our, 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 our uh, New Zealand Aotearoa. We've represented our families. We've represented um, Pasifika Samoa. Um, at those levels, but we've never been able to really represent at the real operations where they are making those decisions. And now we are finally, we are beginning to make those steps towards that. Hey, Ronnie, if you, um, you know, to be quite honest, I couldn't really think of a wonderful guy like yourself to be able to take that role. You epitomize what uh, success and high standards uh, is all about. You're, uh, over the years, I've been impressed with your humility and the way you've gone about uh, you know, the way you conduct yourself both on and off, of, off the field. These are the things that are really important, how you carry. See, we have a saying in Samoa, which means in English, you know, you're, you're, you're judged, you're, you're, you're known by the way you talk, the way you, you speak, the way you sit down, the way you, you act around people. Uh, and so that, that's, that's, that's certainly true. And I think that's some of the challenges off the field that some of our Pacific Island players do face. You know, fame is, is one thing that is, is very hard for them to embrace. All of a sudden, they go from, you know, this happy-go-lucky kid. We all know we've been there. We play with our friends. We, in fact, a lot of us didn't have any aspirations to become All Blacks at a very young age. All we did was just want to play rugby with our friends at the cul-de-sac, at the end of the street, you know, on the field next door, where we can find a blade of grass. Then all of a sudden you get, you know, pushed into this, uh, uh, into this atmosphere where everyone recognises you. People will know your name. People want to walk up and ask you for your signature. It, it's quite overwhelming. So what I'm saying is, the need for these young men to embrace professions and the game has moved on since we played. Uh, everyone, you know, when you look at it, it's evolved incredibly uh, uh, fast for some of uh, some of those our young kids today. And the importance that the role that you have is making sure that these kids are being well looked after, well managed, and they get the right direction, support, 
you know, we'll talk about psychology later on, but th yeah. this is where your, your role is so important. Is, is that correct? That's right. And it's, we, we, we look at, and not just the, as you know, we are such a, a, a collectivist community of people. It's not just ourselves, it's our whānau. I belong to my family, my family belongs to me. And I think that's what's really important for the New Zealand environment to understand, and even for New Zealand rugby to understand, that when you're not dealing with an individual, you have to also uh, engage with the family, the ainga, um, and because they are the key people that are also contributing to the decisions of this young man. And even if we look at the black ferns, even the young women that are starting to come through, we're seeing at the highest level, which is wonderful, seeing our people represented in those places. But it's really about creating the environment for our young men and women to flourish. You're absolutely right. You know, the, I think one of the things that I've, I've, you and I have been challenged with in seeing a lot of our, more of our young people come through is there was a point of time where for many of us as elite athletes, when we're coming through, like you said, that uh, because we're naturally good at this game, we, rugby is something that just flows out of us and, we're, and, and as well as many other gifts and talents. But I think one of the things, though, for many of our young people is that when they get to that point where they realize that my natural talent is going to get me to here, but in order to take the next step into the elite, into professionalism, into creating a career that can help set up their families for a long time, that it's, it's probably one of the hardest steps to take, eh, bro? It's one of those hardest because it, it engages so much. It, it, it stretches you. It takes you to that place, to the, to the limit of your, of your physical abilities, and you need to keep pushing. And I think mentally, and as you say, we'll talk about the psychology of it later, but you know the ability to push through those hard times to be able to get to the place where you want to get to, to that goal and aspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back. Don't miss this part because the next bit part is going to be very interesting. We're going to take a quick run, music break, and we'll come back and read some more sports, uh, sport, sports results, or not, sports draw, sorry, coming up. And then we'll just talk a bit more because it's just starting to warm up. Thank you, Ronnie, and we'll go straight to our break. Uzo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it's, uh, yeah, I just, honestly, I, yeah, we're still on Facebook Live. So even though we're taking a, <laughs> uh, a couple of songs uh, break, but we're still on live anyway on, on Facebook. So, look, um, I'm really excited, bro. You know, when they announced this, uh, when they announced this role that you're having, man, I thought, wow, you couldn't, couldn't happen to a better Blake Ronnie. So, you know, uh, is it, and you, you, you're based down in Wellington or do you just travel back, you commute backwards? Yeah, yeah I'm commuting backwards and forwards. Um, probably every couple of weeks, brother, and I there is um, because basically my team are based down Wellington, so wow. I'm either Zoom calling like this or I'm flying down to Wellington. And I, I now that you know we're coming out of COVID, and there's also we're coming out of restructures that New Zealand rugby has to go through as well. Yes. So we're kind of now understanding more of, of what what we do, and what we can do, given we don't have the same number of staff. Yes. So yes. it's um, so there is a lot of uh, rebuilding that even New Zealand rugby are going through. I mean, we didn't even think we we're going to be playing any more rugby at all this year. So look, look what look what it's done. It's it's caused quite a reset, and um, and in some ways there are a lot of good things that have come out of it as well. And we'll probably talk about it some more around the, yes. the inclusion of a bus speaker team for um, a few perhaps look super rugby. So this, that's very exciting as well. So. Oh, no, we'll definitely talk about that as well on, on my bucket list to talk to you about because it's exciting. It is exciting times also, you know. Um, but I, I was, I had some people, some guests on our show, and not long ago, and we were talking about the when the All Black squad was announced. Eleven Samoans, three Philippines, and three Tongans. Wow, that's. <laughs> You know, and because I want to talk about that, the influence of the Pacific Islanders that's having on, and also the impact that they're having uh, mm. on, on not just rugby, but sports in general, you know, because it is exciting times for the Pacific yes. Islanders, are you know? Absolutely. So, so yeah. that sounds good to me, and it's wonderful to see more and more of the influence of our, of our young men and women that are coming through. So you're right. Yes. 
And then we were talking about, <laughs> we are just talking about this at breakfast this morning, you know, just the, uh, with, with some friends of mine just saying, you know, um, the, the inclusion of uh, Pacific Island teams, in fact, you know, you look through the, the stats on, on starting from schools rugby to club rugby to provincials and then straight on to, you know, um, you know, our national team, you know, it's just the convey about just keeps on going, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's wonderful because it's a reflection of our community. I mean, given New Zealand, you know, Auckland alone is the, the biggest Pacific population in the world. I think, um, you know, there's some parts in the States where that's starting to be challenged, but I think currently we still hold in terms of population the highest in uh, for Pacific um, here in Auckland. So Wellington is certainly growing there, but we're seeing a lot more other parts of, of New Zealand, even the rural, small rural towns, Brother, if you, if you remember when we were playing, there was one or two people, you know, about our speaker that were playing for South Canterbury or North Otago or, but now with, uh, with now with a lot more of the seasonal um, um, pickers and, and other workers that are coming over to New Zealand, they're growing in those smaller, um, smaller towns. Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna hang there. We've got to read out the foreign exchange. <laughs> It'll come straight back. Fifteen seconds, Ronnie. Cool. I think I saw legs walking here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can see everyone else busy behind the scenes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to England Wingers Sporting Hour. Here with eighty-seven point five FM Radio Samoa. My guest is the Ronnie Clark. The wonderful um, or ex All Black that he has been, and a wonderful role model. He's got a fantastic role in the New Zealand Rugby Union, which is the Pacifica Engagement Manager. His role is to actually look after these young Pacific Island uh, players coming through to nurture them, give them all the support off the field, so that when they go on the field, they become the the, the superstars that uh, we want them to be. And Ronnie, um, you know, you, looking at the stats is quite impressive uh in second schools you know seven in auckland alone 78 percent uh pacific islanders which 60 61 percent are Samoans. in club rugby it's even more astonishing 88 percent are pacific islanders which is 69 percent are Samoans. then you come to the all blacks and after being the the squad just recently announced where your your son Caleb uh, was also included in that All Black squad, eleven Samoans, three Tongans, three Fijians. You know, I think I think New Zealand rugby 
future is is in good hands. You know, when you see this conveyor belt of talent just mm-hmm. producing these incredible Pacific Island um, uh, rugby players. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why it gives way to having this type of role, this role in New Zealand rugby as the Pacifica um, engagement manager. It's when you think about the statistics from, yeah, you're absolutely right, from club rugby, the grassroots in New Z- in Auckland alone of the 22,000 um, people that are registered to play rug- club rugby alone in Auckland, over 50% of those, 60% of those are Pacifica. Yeah. So that's, a, that's massive in terms of when you think about the contribution at club loaner level. As, um, and then you can also begin it. So it really does give, um, reflect why we see the All Blacks with such a huge number of our bus speaker in there now. And that will continue. And I think you're absolutely right that we'll continue to, to have that. And as we, you know, the, the, the aspirations of our, of our young men and women to play sport and not just rugby, we've got netballers, we've got basketballers, we've got, and that's just the sports sector alone. When you think about education, when you think about in health, we're having these young leaders that are rising through into managerial, into leadership roles, into roles, into governance roles. That's what I think really we want to begin to build within Auckland, within Aotearoa, that we're represented not just on the courts and on the fields, Yes. but also in the boardrooms and in the, in the operations of, of these organisations. Ronnie, uh, a, a famous politician, I won't name his name, but he tried to lure, encourage me and, and, and Mike, Sir Michael Jones to go into politics. And after this meeting we had with him, he walked us to the front gate and, and this is what he said. Hang on, Michael, I don't, we as a party don't have all the answers to the challenges and the problems that your Pacific community uh, faces every day here in New Zealand. But if you really want to make a huge influence, then you're going to have to sit at the place of policy, where policies are created, where decision makings at the table. And when I think about what he said, he was very, very spot on. You know, now we're starting to see this uh, uh, movement. You're involved with that. Sir Michael uh, Jones was, is on the board. Sir Brian Williams was was the president not long ago, and in this whole thing about uh, good governance and uh, good administration in sport by our Pacific Island people, because that's something also that's been targeted by World Rugby uh, about our Pacific Islanders, the Samoans, the Tongans, and the Fijians, about getting our governance right, getting our administration uh, properly uh, done. You know that's. And, and, and that is really important, isn't it? If we're going to improve and give our Pacific Islands, okay, we're talking about our Pacific Islands here in Samoa, Tong, and Fiji. We've got to give ourselves a chance. If we're going to give ourselves a chance, we've got to get those right, the, the right administration, the right people, the right people that's running rugby here in these islands, eh? Mm, absolutely. And I think that's very important. And as you know, um, there's that, the, the old saying that uh, everything rises and falls on leadership. Um, the success of any organisation or any team or any 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 group of that uh, that are moving towards a direction um, is important to have good leadership. And I think what's even more important for us that the way that we see leadership is different to the way perhaps in the Western world that they see leadership as well. And whether it's leadership in in, in Samoa, whether it's leadership here in New Zealand. And, and the, the importance of, of us in terms of the way that we lead, I think that's what's important because I think um, there, for, so I believe for a long time here in New Zealand, we've often been seen, seen, not heard. And as you said, Inga, that we need to be in those places of policy, you're absolutely right. And I think that's the way that I, I suppose that we, we tell to how we serve, how we um, are able to serve our communities are in those places. And I think making sure that we still have the right heart to serving our people, as we know our alanga ikuole, our lady puole, the tautua, that's important for us. It's important for us to serve our communities in those places with the right motivation, with the right heart um, as well. I think those are key things to understand. Ronnie, the World Rugby have put a lot of pressure on these Pacific Islanders. Look, every four years, the World Cup comes around. Yes. And it brings a lot of excitement to a lot of people around the world that love the sport of rugby. 
But they also expect the Pacific Island teams to continue to create these massive, um, what do you call them? Massive um, shocks, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, being the, the, the smaller teams to be able to uh, beat the, you know, as underdogs to be able to beat all the big nations. You know, it's almost like asking us to pull, a, pull the rabbit out of the hat all the time and bring all these incredible surprises. I mean, we saw it. We saw it when, when Munsa Moore beat Wales back in 1991. You know, we, we saw it when uh, Tonga beat France in, in the 2011 World Cup. You know, in Fiji, it, it, we, did, we saw it again when um, Munsa Moore beat Wales in, again in 1999 World Cup. Now, the reality is that we can't keep pulling the rabbit out of the, the hat all the time and uh, expect us to perform at our highest spoon when things are not all, we're, we're not as well supported as we would like to. If I'm the World, World Rugby or for any organization, I know New Zealand Rugby Union play a big part in trying to support the Pacific Island team as much as possible. And we've had those wonderful relationships over the years. Mm. But, you know, surely, Kit, is there, more to, is, there, is there more that can be done for our Pacific Islanders? That's right. You're absolutely right. Because we want to be the, we want to ensure that we are self-determining. We want to make sure that we are, um, are creating our own futures, um, but, but I think one of the, I believe one of the, having the keys there is, it's taken us a while <laughs> to get to these places of influence here within New Zealand rugby. I mean, it's since the days of um, two of us, Sina Sir Brian, that's 50, 50 years ago. Yes. And you think about the involvement of Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, within the IRB, within world rugby, it's taking us time to try and get to those places of influence on the board, um, uh, um, ensuring that we are building the right relationships. It's good to see Fiji are certainly making some some good ways in terms of really building that. But I think also what we continue to really need to have is build these strong relationships, um, continue for us to work on the inside to to, um, assist Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, to go to to rise to that next level. I know that there's been support but i believe now with more of, of plus speaker that in these places of influence in new zealand rugby we need to start building them within australia rugby as well so that we can build more and more of our base that really so that when we are at the world rugby when we do come to the world cups Samoa are not faced with these these very quick turnarounds between each games i mean it's it's really it, it, it's heartbreaking to see um tier one teams having these extended number of breaks between games and expecting our tier two, three teams like Samoa, uh, Fiji and Tonga to turn around in six days. It's, it's, it's five days. It's, 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 it's too hard, especially for a, a short space of time as such as a tournament. So building strong relationships and also continuing to make those ways to in those spaces towards governance in world rugby, I think those are some of the key things and it will take time, but as we continue to build relationships, I think we can get there. I believe we can get there. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you because it's been a very slow process. And like you said, uh, Irani, we are making, I suppose, incremental steps, eh? small little steps going forward. But at least we're going forward. We're not going backwards, you know. <laughs> I think uh, I see that we've got a Pacific Island uh, organization that's been set up to look after the welfare of our Pacific Island players all around the world. And, um, and they're trying their best to try and embrace uh, the, the, the modern game, the professional game, because it has, it really has changed. You know, the, the players, even just looking in the last 15 years, the, the physical uh, uh, shape is much different to what we were when we were playing, you know, I mean, a good, a good example is your son. I mean, you know, I thought we were big when we were playing, right? But along comes Caleb and, and, and he's just the, you know, well, obviously he's the chip of the, the old block like yourself, but he's just the biggest, meaner, stronger, faster player. And we'll talk about him later on. But uh, yeah, these are the challenges that um, these, these young players are going to face. But, you know, coming back to what you're saying, I do want to stress the importance of that. I think the whole keeping the, the communication between the players, the Pacific Island unions and the bigger clubs that, especially in Europe, that are, have opened their doors and employed and signed up a lot of our Pacific Island because that's where we're heading. A lot of them are heading north. And just because the pressure, I read not long ago during the World Cup, or prior to the World Cup last year, 
the, 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 some of these players have been influenced not to make themselves available because of the pressure that the clubs um, have um, put, put on them. And it's very unfair. You've got the World Cup, which is the pinnacle of any player's dream is to play for this national side against the best of the best in the world. Absolutely. And you know, you're right. And you, know, you want to see at the Rugby World Cup every, t- every four years, the best players in the world come to those games. But we can't if they're being bound by clubs, they're being bound by, um, by their, their, their um, contracts, um, obligations that they can't come. So we need to put pressure on them. And that's why it's wonderful that we have the, the, rugby play, the Pacific Rugby Players Association, we've got New Zealand Rugby, all these associations are set up so they do um, benefit and help to benefit our players and help them to free them to be able to represent their countries in their international um, schedule. So that's what's really, and especially for Rugby World Cups. Yeah, no, look, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back on our third segment. Then we're going to talk about the son of yours, this man mountain of a of a, of a salmon beast that's played, you know, been selected, and, and everyone's very proud. I, I, I certainly know that us here in Samoa, when his name was read out, we're, we're all jumping up for joy to see another Samoan, as well as other brothers that uh, are included in this uh, All Black squad. So we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. Eh? We're still live on Facebook, Ronnie. You can um, you can have your shout outs if you want. <laughs> yeah, I'd certainly like to. Uh, you from from Wulia. Thank you, brother. It's a real. We just want to say um, hello to uh, to my Ainga and Le Vayala and Vayala. Um, I hope you're all well. Atapanda, Matanga. Hope you're all well there. And of course, all of our family in um, in Salo Fata, uh, my sister Lofata and the family there as well. Hope you're all well. Lofatu, mum and dad are well, and um, we hope. All going well. That in time, as the levels of uh, drop here in New Zealand with due to COVID, that we can um, come and to visit uh, home, uh, Liverpool. You know, so hopefully that uh, we'll be able to meet again all of our family and all the class and the all um, as well. Yeah, we're all well. And I hope you're all well too. Oh, where's your? So you're saying in Bayala? Yeah, Mum's Bayala and um, Bayala and. Family in Maipunga and Makaoku is, uh, as well. So, uh, Pia, all around our, our family are there, uh, the, the Maimonga. So, uh, oh. it's the district. So, Yoi, that's mum. And dad's way out in Salufata, uh, Lutluki, and Kamabiula as well. So, Yoi, that's I remember the, the, the days when mum used to wear her gum boots and her umbrella. <laughs> 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 you know, and how the how the umbrellas can be such a weapon as well, <laughs> especially if the opposition uh, crowd was uh, was was baying for your blood. <laughs> yes, yes, no, oh, no, that's. I know time has flown, eh, Yusuf? It's it's just gone so quickly, and before we know, we're well, well, we're fifty now. We're over fifty. Yeah, in fact, we're fifty-one. <laughs> Both fifty-one. Born in sixty-nine. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, at least we're younger than uh, Sir Michael, uh, our, bro- our brother. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not as old as Sir Michael, are we, Michael Jones? <laughs> I've been trying to get him on our show. He's always busy. <laughs> very, very busy. If he's not if he's not on the board of, uh, not, we work for the board of New Zealand Rugby, he's very busy with the food bank, as you know, and um, yes. using our people and our communities um, with uh, with himself and of course with uh, Maliena, um, really serving, and we all contribute, we all help um, in that space as well. So we all, it's really good. Yeah, no, I want to do a shout out to my man when we come back live on our on our show because he has been done a fantastic job, and him him and uh, Malina, uh, yeah. you know, just providing that you know that comfort for all those families going through all our that difficult time. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to. I'm going to say a quick hello to my brother. I hope he's, he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll be, how long we got? Ready to go? Yeah. 30 seconds. 15. 15 seconds. Here we go. Or oh, 50. <laughs> you can still, we've got 50 seconds to set, do your shout outs too, Ronnie. <laughs> Not just you got your friends back in New Zealand. Really? Wow. No, we, uh, we're certainly all well here and um, 
the weather's not too bad here, brother. Uh, we heard when you, when you were saying, talking about the weather, the weather is starting to warm up in New Zealand. You know, around this time of the year, it's starting to get towards October, November, it's starting to warm up again. So we are thankfully um, getting yes. more, some more fine weather in, in Auckland. Yeah, not, even though it's not, raining not over here, it's still beautiful because it's still nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, man. So in Auckland, it is level two. Yes. Now we are level two, but the rest of New Zealand are level one. Oh, okay. so, um, so hopefully Auckland at some stage soon. But before <laughs> the, the Auckland Eden Park test, we're back to level one, I hope. Mm. Hi uh, everybody, if you're joining in to England the Wingers Sporting Hour here with 87.5 FM Radio Samoa. You know, if you're joining us around the globe, I'm my beautiful guest, my wonderful guest this morning has been uh, none other than Ironic Clark, the Pacifica uh, manager, uh, engagement manager for the New Zealand Rugby Union has joined me, my wonderful friend for many, many years. Uh, a wonderful singer. He's he he he, he belongs to this uh, gospel <laughs> choir uh, or gospel uh, the Soul Fives. So, uh, he's, he's got a, he's a man of many talents. In fact, Ronnie's sister Cheryl Clark also represented the New Zealand Ferns. Well, the Ferns, you know. the Ferns. You know, she had a very uh, distinguished and, and um, beautiful career as well. Another wonderful. Someone that's doing really well, and one said, you know, being a wonderful example as a sister in June those time. And there, there weren't many in those um, those days there, Ronnie, in, in Nepal. You know, there was Rita Fatialofa, yeah, uh, that I remember the, the more famous ones, and then your sister right. Cheryl. And then right, there, I think together around that time was Bernice Mene, um, Linda Babana, of course. Um, she started Leilani, the late Leilani Reed, yeah, um, was one of the other young lady, young women that were coming through. And of course, um, our Fijian sister, um, that, uh, that is probably, that also was in the winning of the World Cup, um, Vila Maina Dabu. Yes. So we've, I think that's been the wonderful thing that we've had seen more and more. Yes, of course. And so we see more of our, our people that are representing New Zealand yes. um, at, those, at, the, at the highest level. And I think that's been wonderful in terms of, as you know, brother, the aspirations of our people to yes. ascend to these levels whether it's sports, whether it's business, whether it's in health, whether it's in education, that we need some more because they're great role models. And the more that our young people see these role models in those, in those places, the more belief that it instills in them that they can do it as well. And I think that's been the wonderful thing over the years. Yes. I, I love what you said before, Inga, about how we were, we were able to become all blacks and the influence that it had. And, and it was something you know, that, that mum said to me when I when I was when I was able when I was picked for the order, she said, "Son, every Pacific Islander, every brother and sister can flick up their collar and say that's a brother." And I I really appreciate it, and I really it really spoke to me about the the influence, the the but also the responsibility that we have for the next generation of our young people that were coming through. I suppose the same in essence the the responsibility that. To of us in there, so Brian had for all of us coming through as well. Yes, yeah. yes no, definitely. Now, I was watching a little documentary on YouTube, and it was regarding your son, and he told a wonderful story about how they were, you know, their project at school when he was a young kid was the All Blacks. And he, he, he goes on to say on this, on this YouTube uh, program about his uh, experience of, his, of, of All Black. Then when, he, when they opened this book, this, this massive book that had all the All Blacks history and all that, mm -hmm. he was shocked to see you, your photo there. <laughs> he came home and he said, Mom, is that an All Black? <laughs> and no idea that you were an All Black. <laughs> yeah. That's and a classic, know, isn't it? <laughs> I think it was the picture that they scored, the game that you and I played against uh, World 15. Yes. The, you're right, because he knew he played rugby. He knew that Dad played rugby. He knew that, in, in fact, EJ and Caleb at that time, they knew that my dad had played rugby and he played for Auckland. But I wasn't playing for the All Blacks at that time. I was out of the All Blacks and I had been for a while. And um, But I got back in again a, a couple of years later. But it was in that period where I had been in the All Blacks so he knew I played, but what? But he didn't know that I had played for the All Blacks in earlier. 
So that's why he got a big shock when this prince said, "Hey, is this your dad?" <laughs> <laughs> so he got a he was he, he he got shocked, and so he brought took the book and brought it home. And so I said, "Oh yes, son, um, yeah, dad played for the All Blacks, and um, dad's trying to get back in again." So anyway, <laughs> and that inspired him, you know. There's, because I, the the Caleb I remember mm. was the one that did, did athletics. When you know you, you would take him to athletics or, or Siala, the lovely uh, Siala, everyone is what well, would take him to athletics. You know, and so you know, for it must be a real shock for for the young fella to come home and say, "Dad, <laughs> mum, <laughs> that is it all bad." <laughs> yeah. I suppose you know, that's, that, yeah, that's sometimes a funny thing. You know, we don't. Those are sort of things that we a part of our life but you know in our in our family it's 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 just you know it, it becomes normal you you don't really it's not a you know thing that we kind of you know well it's um, a big but, thing sometimes it's, it's we don't realize we, we i suppose in our yeah. time your honor we, we we didn't actually see the importance of being an all black back then yes. you know because you you know when you went out the door you you, you, you become an instant hero. People recognize, they'll come up to you and ask you for your autographs. But when you go home, well, you're just another child. <laughs> you go home yeah, exactly. and um, mom goes, I'll go and wash your dishes and take out the rubbish and make your beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and whether you're 40 or 30 years old, you'll still get told off by mom as well. And you know, it's, and that's, that's, and that's the wonderful thing. That's why I, I love um, our community. That's why I, I have such a, um, a love and respect for the way that we were raised because yes. you're right in a you, you and I know in that in that environment of that elite there's a lot of pressure there's the different things that that really can and can huge, cause huge stress yes. but when we're at home it's just us it's we we're not the all black we are the father we're the son we are the uncle we are the cousin and that's that's the wonderful thing about it so yeah Home is the real leveler, and mum is the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> the matriarch of the, yeah. of Go the and home. put lawns, and yeah. while you're there, take out the rubbish. Unbelievable. Yeah. But that's, that's mum. That's our Pacific Island mums for us. But coming back to your son, yes. Caleb, what a fantastic uh, uh, rise he's had. An incredible, you know, coming back from the schoolboys, then up to the under-20s is when he really started taking off. Then... It was just for me when I first saw Caleb burst onto the scene. I thought, "Well, here we go. This is just a matter of time. It's not if he will become an All Black. It's just when he will become an All Black." And uh, you know, I think he's he's just been an inspiration to a lot of other young kids coming through. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I'm sure as as as, as parents, you know, and, and certainly uh, grandparents, it'd be yeah. very tough to be able to see a second generation of All Blacks coming through that that that. Their family, the Clark family. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Inga. Thank you, and especially coming from from you, brother. You know, in terms of the, the the ins and outs of what it is to become an All Black. Well, one to play on the wing, but also to ascend to playing at the highest level on the wing for the All Blacks as well. And so, thank you, brother. The the one of the, as you know, I think one of the things that we as fathers that we um, we're often challenged by, and I. At the first, I, I suppose I didn't really see it, but over the years I began to, especially as Caleb started to come through high school, senior high school, he was becoming more recognizable. Now that we're seeing First 15 play on Sky TV now, so now our young men and women are now put on TV around the globe at secondary school level. And so now he's beginning to be recognized, but people are seeing him as, oh, that's Erroni's boy, Erroni Clark's son. And one of the things I suppose that started to um, compound on him was the pressure that, oh no, I have to live up to this expectation that I'm an all black son. Yeah. And at first it was, he struggled with it and I could see there was something that changed about him. And so I, I sat him down and I said, son, what, what's the matter? He goes, dad, I'm really struggling with this uh, Erroni's boy. I want to make sure I want to be me. Yeah. I don't want to be caught under this. So I said to him, son, in terms of expectation, I'm your father. I will always love you. And the other thing too, I have no expectation of you to do what dad's done. I have my only expectation of you is to do your best. When you're out there, do your best. It's the same thing that mom, that your nana and papa said to me. I'm saying it to you. Just do your best. <laughs> and, 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 so, and I think that's what it freed him. 
it, 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 it gave me a sense of freedom that he can now know that dad has no expectation of him at all, but to do his best and be free to, to express the gift that God has given him on the field. Yes. And so I think that's when, when we dealt with that in his high school years, he was able then to carry on and, and keep going. He was always focused. He was, you talked about athletics and he was very successful in athletics. But what the athletics taught him was the discipline, the yeah. discipline of running. As you and I know, we, we try to keep, we try to learn all that style, but it was a bit late for you and me by that stage, by the time we got to go to the tracking. It was like two wild horses galloping. <laughs> we, did, we didn't even know what a starting block looked like. <laughs> Absolutely. Whereas Caleb, he had, and his trainer was a, was a Tongan gentleman. So again, from our own communities, yeah. that taught him how to run but he taught him also how to push through and relax through when your body is screaming and your mind's telling you to stop, but to hold your form. And I think that's what really taught him a lot about the same thing going into on the rugby field. And, um, and you know, I think that's been some of the things that he's learned yes. um, on his journey through to today. No, I, I can relate to that, uh, Ronnie, even simply because I have sons as well. And um, I can also relate to the fact that exactly what you say, you, you just tell them to live their own lives, to follow their own desires in terms of their careers and that. Because mm -hmm. my for that very reason, my boys took up boxing. Yes. You know, they tried rugby and they didn't like it because they were all, everywhere they went, oh, son of Inga, Inga's yeah. son. Exactly what Caleb's facing. So I'm glad you, you, you did the same thing I did. Just sat them down and said, do what you want. So they ended up they picking the hardest sport to play was boxing. <laughs> Son, that's not a sport. You know, you don't you don't play boxing. You 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 beat each other up. And and he goes, Well, it's the only sport that you can beat each other up and still shake hands and hug them. <laughs> um, it's, as it depends whether you're knocked out or not. But exactly exactly what you did, I did, you know, a few years earlier with, with my boys. And even my grandson, uh, Ronnie, it it wasn't it wasn't long ago when my grandson found out that uh, that I had played for the All Blacks, mm. and because because he was brought up in boxing, and in fact he boxed, and it was only when he went back to New Zealand that he realised that um, he realised that uh, I had played played rugby, and so his dad had to show him uh, on YouTube some of the highlights, and and he just looked at me and he goes, Dad, a papa, you were really fast, but now you're not, hey? <laughs> Put on too much weight, <laughs> but. Uh, I love what you've done and running with this young man and he, he's got a wonderful future. And, and you know, he, every now and again in, in any sporting teams, you know, you have the, you know, in boxing, you have the Mike Tysons, you've got, in, in basketball, you have the Michael Jordans, you know? Um, and I, I think this guy has got, has the opportunity to just like, like rugby. We had Jonah, you know, to lit up the world. This, this kid without putting any pressure or mm. predicting his future, mm. he's got, the X Factor, and I really wish him all the success. And I know because he's been well brought up, also Ronnie, you know, mm -hmm. by you and Ciala, the beautiful Ciala. You know, he's well. They say the world is your oyster, mm -hmm. and I, I really, really hope that he takes the opportunity with both hands, no doubt. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break, Ronnie, and then we'll come back in our last segment. If uh, if you're just a bit more, bit, little bit more patient, okay, brother. But uh, we'll be still live on Facebook, so you can still we can still chat. So we'll take a quick break. <coughs> no. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. It's just recently when little Vine goes, Papa, I didn't know you played rugby <laughs> because everything was always boxing at home. Was always boxing, boxing this, boxing that, and obviously he boxed as well when he was here in Samoa. So. I miss the little fella. How old is how old is um, Baba now? How old is he? Can you hear me? Yep. How old is how old is he now? Then is he? I've got to uh, do a shout out to, to Michael Faith. That's the first one I'm going to do when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to my friend Neil Steele. Um, well, is it is it live? I was just <laughs> so big shout out to my man Neil Steele. Stevenson, wherever you are, you're probably lying in the car in a coconut tree somewhere, enjoying the breeze. Uh, good, big hello, big shout out to my man. Also to um, Lucky, Lucky and Bex from Pure Pacific Water. You know, as always, they're very supportive. Uh, 
So Manu, so uh, lovely to always have your support. Uh, who else can I? You got any, you got any families and friends? <laughs> too many to mention, um, brother. The, this uh, yeah, but um, I think the all of our family here are, are all well, and um, our families across New Zealand, Aotearoa as well, and around the world, particularly in Australia. Um, I think Lappi and, uh, and Jolene that are in the Gold Coast. And Cheryl now is living in, and Malcolm are living in Brisbane. And like he's still involved in the sport, but actually are now in ministry. So that's the, the path where they're becoming there. So they're uh, certainly uh, down, going down the, the pathway, along the pathway of becoming ministers in the ministry. Um, Cheryl and Malcolm. And so, yeah, just a really big shout out to you, all of them across. <laughs> Um, Australia. How long we got? Yeah. Yeah. How long we go, dude? <laughs> okay, we're coming for our last segment, Ronnie. Talk about the psychology and all that, so yeah. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to England Wingers Sporting Hour here on 87.5 FM Radio Samoa. And if you're joining us, my wonderful guest has been, in the last 45 minutes, has been a Ronnie Clark, the ex-All Black, Monsam Moore, the Blues. You had a stint down in the Highlanders, I see as well. And uh, and uh, Suburbs Man, uh, a wonderful uh, club there in West Auckland suburbs. We need to give my club possibly a lot of headaches over the, over the years. <laughs> Um, but uh, he's my guest and we've just been talking a lot about just where Pacific Island rugby is at and uh, his wonderful son Caleb who made the All Black squad just recently uh, just a big shout out uh, live to my good friend our good friend Sir Michael Jones Laoli uh, Sir Michael Jones and his lovely wife uh, Marina you know just for all the wonderful work that they've done throughout this uh, COVID-19 uh, shutdown and it's affected, obviously, a lot of our Pacific Island communities. And I'll just see the incredible work that uh, Malina, uh, Malina and, uh, and Sumaka have done uh, behind the scenes and providing food packs. I see Bowden Barrett was out there delivering some of the stuff with yourselves there, Ronnie. Um, so, Sumaka, if you're listening, uh, I've always wanted you to come on my show. But uh, obviously, you're very, very busy with our people in our community, which is a good excuse. But uh, a big shout out to our brother, because eh? he's been, like you said there, Ronnie, early on the show. Mm. Now, these are the trailblazers, that, the guys that set the pace for us. And we've just been fortunate and honoured, privileged to be able to follow behind their footsteps and, and take the game to, to where we, how we've achieved the game. And, and, you know, the next generation has come through as well. That's right. And you know, there's that, uh, um, in, in the scripture that it says that to whom much is given, that much is required. And, you know, there's, that's been that, 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 that responsibility that we've shared over the years um, when, from when we were playing. And um, no doubt our, our, our brother, um, um, Laoli, has continued to take that challenge. And as you know, you've talked about the food bank, but he's also has a chartered school as well for providing education for many of our young people who are falling through the cracks um, at high school. And so this, the, 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 the bus speaker advancement um, for secondary schools um, or PASS, which is in Odahu, um, is another opportunity for our young people to come back to school, to get, gaining the credits that they need to go on to further their studies and further their, um, to take their, to their school into another level. So he's done so many things um, from education to, 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 to social development, to health. So, he said on a lot of areas, which is where a lot of our people are featuring the negative statistics. Ronnie, I remember when he first started with his lovely wife, Malena, uh, the Village Trust. Yes. Set that up. And it's for that very reason. I know your 
your brother-in-law, uh, Nick, uh, my, our wonderful friend, <laughs> Nick, was helping it, helping setting that all up, having you involved. And that, I remember the motto, it takes a, it takes a village to raise a child, a child yes. you know, and he's just expanded. He's just gone from one, from strength to strength. It's all about people. And, you know, people, you know, and it probably, it's fair to say that saying, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You know? Absolutely. That is so true. You know? and, and Michael, when you, when you talk to him, when you talk to the man, you see there's such a heart of generosity. There's such a heart of, of, of love that he has for and to all people. And you know, it's it's no wonder that that he has this knighthood that you know he's um, that he has, and it's you know he he his heart is for people. It's hard, is, but his heart is particularly for our bus speaker people, our young yeah. people. And I think the and I, I see for so many things that you and I have been together with Michael and and, and doing a lot of things for our communities. It's the way that it's our tautua. It's 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 the responsibility that we have to opening doors for our young people, for all for our communities that couldn't be perhaps open before. And I think that's the, that is the responsibility of our next generation to do, to carry on. It's the same baton that our parents gave to us to carry on within, um, within where we live and, and the places where we live to open those doors. Hey, Ronnie, and, well, what's your, what, what would your advice be to our Pacific Islanders? Okay, especially here in Samoa. Our youngsters that want to pursue their careers, whether it's in Mansam or Mansina or any other particular sport, because our young ones here, and having lived here now for seven years, I realized we've got the talent on this island. There's, there's plenty. The product is our talent. The yes. ability to be able to pick the ball up naturally and just run. And, uh, and they want to aspire to, to play for our national teams. But... The unfortunate thing is that a lot of our national, international teams are all filled up with overseas Samoans, you know? I mean, what, what, would, you, what would your advice be for uh, those who are tuning in and listening, you know, for our local ones here? Thank you, brother. This is really important. There is no difference physically between our young people um, our, 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 who, are, who are playing rugby in New Zealand, Australia, or even over in Europe, to our, our young people that are living in, New in, in Samoa or in the Pacific Islands. Physically, we are all the same. The difference where I've always seen and often seen why these, the, often, uh, some of the differences are has been that the ability to not give up. Um, and I think when it's, when it's tough, don't give up. When, 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 when the training is hard, don't stop, don't give up, don't stop until until the coach says stop, until the trainer says stop, that you keep, you've got to learn to push through um, those, those, we've, I mean, we've lived so hard uh, um, in our lives when we think about you know, living in, in, at, at home or where we are, but the ability to push through when your body is screaming and your mind is saying stop, no, if you need to continue to push yourself through those limits. And so this is all our young people that are listening. It, it's still, you, our talent will get us to a certain level. But it's the next oh, 10, 15 percent, which 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 requires almost everything of you to commit yourself to pushing through the barriers. That's where you need to. That's where we need to be always, so that we can be competing. Then, or the next, it'll just come down to experience and having the experience of playing in the in, around the world um, uh, that will help you to gain that experience. But I think first and foremost. For, um, as this, it's the same challenges too that our young people are facing here in New Zealand and Australia and around the world is that they realize their talent will get them to a certain level, but in order to go to the next level, it takes requires almost everything of you, mind, uh, body, um, to push yourself through the limits. And I think that's really at the end of the day, for me, that's what's required. And a huge belief, well, last, first, last also was really important is the belief in your ability because when the world stops believing you have to keep believing and that's the wonderful thing is that our family can help us to keep believing as well and our support <laughs> our greatest support as well so, yeah. so thank you that's and, uh, great thank advice you know if you're listening you're tuning in, if, even if you're not a sports uh, athlete but you're listening to some of these wonderful uh, 
nuggets of wisdom that uh, Ronnie Clark is sharing uh, this morning about not giving up. And, and you can apply that whether you're in sports or in business, just don't give up, yeah. you know, yeah. don't give up. And again, what you said about, you know, just believe when no one else believes in yourself, believe, believe in yourself, you know, because just by believing in yourself, it gives you hope, you know, and when you have hope, you got a chance. That's right. Absolutely. Once you have a hope, you have, you have hope. You have you have a chance, and so you know because you know sorry, yeah. Sorry, uh, Ronnie. Uh, our local, yeah, you're right. And that's what I do see with a lot of our young athletes. They do give up. You know, they put a few more fear. Uh, you know, and because they don't they don't persevere, and they, and, and it's not going their way, they, they do give up easily. Yes. But, you know, like you said, it comes back to just being focused. Now, this is my last part before we, we sign off. Mm. Psychology, the mental preparation, because that's something we, we unfortunately, we don't do very well here. Right. Obviously, we don't have the qualifications as much. We don't have qualified people on island like sports psychologists, uh, you know, all that kind of therapy that is required. Because when you look at the modern day rugby, they've got player, they've got all that. All that support. You look at, you know, in the All Blacks. I know in England, they have some of the best support. Like of big welfare. Skills, absolutely. I, I had the privilege to um, talk to uh, Pat Lamb, who's mm. the up there in uh, in Bristol, and he, they were just moving into their new facilities. And he was just telling me what what they've got there. He said it's one of the best facilities in the world. You know, they've got everything. And then I looked through the the YouTube, and I came across Leicester. Uh, Leicester Rugby Club and what they've got they've got incubators you know uh, oxygen chambers to help recovery and all that you know they've got six physiotherapists they've got six doctors on hand 24 7 so they're monitoring their their improvement we don't have that privilege here in the islands <laughs> so <coughs> I suppose Ronnie this psychology is something that I really want to see a, a massive improvement here on our our local uh, sportsmen and women, doesn't matter what sport, but we've got the talent. You're right. We can compete against. We've shown that in the Pacific Games just gone last year. We did extremely well given our population size. But that sports psychology is so important. What, what's your understanding on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think even the, the word of God says that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love power and of a sound mind. Like this. And so, you know, I think that's what's really important to know is that, okay, then so how do we strengthen that part of us how do we if, if our mind is a muscle like we exercise our muscle to get stronger how do we make our mind build resilience how do we build our mind so that when we when we do have when life broadsides us when things happen to us that are negative or we are not selected or other things like that where we face these difficulties how do we exercise our mind to be able to push through those and it's 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 in those it really just as we we're under when we want to strengthen our muscles our physically that we give weights and we build that was and we, we strengthen and it recovers it's the same way with our minds same way as well when there is stress and there's anxiety too much stress is not good obviously but when you're going through challenges and you're able to and you've got the supports around the right supports around you that's what's important that builds the resiliency that builds the strength the the mental, the mental toughness, so that when you come through to another challenge, whether it's within training or whether it's in life, your mind is then stronger. So I've seen this before, I'm gonna push through this again. And so I think yeah. that's for me, that's very simple, that's very uh, um, um, a, a similar approach that we do in the physical, it's the same approach in terms of the mental and the spiritual as well. You're so right, because I think that's, you know, like you said, alluded to early on your on your talk, that uh, talent can only take you so far. And I think if, if, if rugby was only a 60-minute game, I reckon we'll be world champions. This <laughs> is that last 20 minutes. Somehow we don't manage to close games off. We don't manage to finish, finish well. Our, our man, game management gets subsided. You know, and I, I just think some, and that's where that whole mental approach that mental focus, that psychology and support is yes. so crucial, you know? That's right. And, and I think the, the one thing that's really important as well is the more that you're, you, you, as, you, as you're growing in strength, mentally and physically, you, the, the one most important thing is 
is that you always have that choice. The choice always sits with you. When it's easy to say, no, I'm stopping, and it's harder to say yes, go yes, because that's going to continue to build and strengthen you as well. Um, yes, to carry on. Yes, to keep moving forward. Yes, to feel the pain and keep moving through it as well. With the right support, with the right um, people around you, you can get through and build that resiliency, build that mental toughness. Because you've got in a team environment, you've got your friends that you look side to side. And, and you know, you know, when we were playing with the All Blacks or we were playing with the Manu at that elite level, yeah. we all pushed together. We all went through it together. And that strengthens your resiliency. That strengthens your, your, your mental toughness. And that's why you need a team around you. T-E-A-M. Together, a everyone village. can use more. It takes a village. <laughs> and I think it's the same thing. Ah, same concept. You're right. Hey, Ronnie, thank you so much for coming on our show. We've come to the end of our program. I would love to continue to talk. We can talk in the, in the next two hours. But, you know, I just want to just wanna say a huge thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the final word if you want to say your, your final words to our listeners. And, and then we've got listeners all around the globe that's been tuning in. We've had people from uh, Ireland um, tuning in, from Australia, from Singapore. So this is your chance because I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to ask you to come back on the show another time later on. But I'd love to give the opportunity for you to say your final words and then we'll just, we'll just close it off. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to, um, again, to be with you and especially to all of our listeners um, in Samoa and across the world as well. Um, I, my heart is, as many others that are in, the, in positions of influence, that our heart is still to serve our communities. Um, we, we, we're so mindful of two things that says, that we still serve that where we are, we serve. We're serving our communities. We're providing opportunities for our, building opportunities for our communities. But also, we know that the answers to our challenges and our issues lie within our, our communities, within our people. So we have the answers. So I think for me, we are continuing to do that. Uh, we're trying to continue to provide more opportunities for more of our past speaker to be at those places of influence so that we can provide more opportunities and turn the tide and make us not the tail, but the head as a speaker in, in Aotearoa. Thank you so much, Irani. Listeners, uh, if, you're, if you're tuning in, we're just finishing off this wonderful hour with uh, Irani Clark, our, our wonderful guest that has come on, the father of uh, Caleb Clark, the, the newly appointed uh, all black. Um, Ronnie. My new name now. Sorry? <laughs> That's my new name now. Oh, yeah, you're Caleb's dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, one day we all become has been. So <laughs> but thank oh. you, Ronnie, for, for, for coming on our show and uh, giving us our, your insights and your inspirational uh, talk. You know, it's been wonderful. And um, just before we uh, close, I just want a big shout out to Facebook Live. You know, Facebook Live. If you're if you're tuning in, now uh, you can download our app, and you, then you can you know you can get updates on all of what's happening on uh, I Spy Radio eighty seven point five FM. But everyone, I'd love to see Allah and to all your wonderful children. I know there's some more Clarks that are still waiting in the wings to to, to burst into into uh, Caleb's shoes as well. But all the very very best, all the very best of your new role. And I know a lot of our Pacific are. Um, sportsmen and women are going to benefit from that role that you've, that you've been appointed. And, you know, I think I also believe it's God's blessing and God's favor at this uh, time of your life. And, you know, like I said earlier on, couldn't think of a better person to fill that role than yourself. So thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts and here in Samoa on 87.5 uh, I Spy mm -hmm. FM. And we want to wish you all the very best and look forward to one day catching up again. Yes, brother. Uh, Thank you, bro. Can you hear us? Ronnie. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll give you a call later on, eh? We'll catch up on Messenger, eh? Sounds good, brother. Hello, Fakuzo. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.
So shout out to Facebook. So